Hey guys, Joe Pazinski with Advanced Innovations in Austin, Texas again. I got a good one for you today. Thank you to everybody that's been subscribing, all the thumbs up, all the hits. I am uh, really pleased to see how these are taking off. Well, if you do have a machine shop, prototype shop, whatever, sooner or later somebody's going to ask you to engrave something or you're going to want to make something that's got a bunch of engraving on it. And if you don't have a CNC machine like that, you're going to have to get your checkbook out, write a purchase order, and you're going to have to take your part somewhere where they can engrave it. Well, I'm going to show you a trick today. I don't know if you can see that. I hope you can. This was actually done on a manual mill in about 30 seconds. Now, a couple of years ago, I got involved with some projects that needed some holes marked as far as ones and twos and lefts and rights and such. And if I would have sent it out for CNC engraving, it would have eaten up all the profit and it wasn't even worth doing the job. So I made this little guy right here. This is an air-driven pantograph. And it's not very sophisticated. It's about eight feet worth of one eighth by three quarter, 60, 61. And then there's some three quarter by two aluminum in here that you can see is machined to a little bit different configuration. Now this doesn't look like much sitting here on the table. So let me pop it into the machine and we're actually gonna cut apart for you and you can see how it works. Now, unlike most pantographs that are a belt-driven, high-speed electric motor, I bought a pencil grinder, a die grinder, an air grinder, and I rigged mine up to run off of air. So, whatever I do out here, and I'm going to engrave the word YouTube right across this surface, driven by these plastic masters that I purchased. We have a stylus pen goes down through the end of this unit and as I walk around these letters here the tip of this little guy does the same thing now if you were to build one of these and it's not that hard and you know this I'm gonna make this short and sweet if I get a lot of feedback and a lot of thumbs up and hits and you guys are real interested in what it takes to make that I'll detail it and put it on my website and you can download it What's really important to remember when you do something like this in a pantograph, if you're going to try to build one from just what you're looking at here, is the fixed point in the machine where I have it in the spindle right now, and it doesn't have to be in the spindle. You can mount it to a post on the table or some other stationary point. This is my cutter, and this is the stylus that's going to track all of the characters in the master set. These need to be in line at all times these three points the fixed point the cutter point and the stylus point so the triangle that you have on the outside pivot point has got to be somewhat of a relation to the triangle on the inside so these guys here at rest are driven by a, a ratio that would make them basically the same that way they'll always stay online with whether or not you pull it, push it, sweep it, whatever. The cutter, the fixed point, and the stylus will stay online. Now if the cutter's here in this position and your characters are out here, it's going to reduce the size of the font. If the stylus is here and the cutter's here, it's going to increase it. I was lucky enough years ago to find this set, and they're just plastic they're one inch tall. They're about 60 thou worth of cutout in them. They're cheap. And you can buy a fancy setup and lock them all down and line them all up. But for, for what I'm doing, 
I took a soft jaw, screwed it to the back of my vise, double stick taped the word YouTube onto it, lined everything up by eye. Now if you give me a second, I'll put this guy on the tripod, as was suggested by one of the other viewers. Sorry about this first person shooter, man. Makes it a lot quicker to finish off these videos after the fact. Okay, I hope you can see that. This is going to be driven by air. It's going to be a little obnoxious to listen to, so forgive me for a couple of seconds, but here we go. between characters, I'm lifting up on the quill arm to get the cutter up off the part. go. That is cleaner than anything you're going to do with a hand engraver. And if you take your time, do it nice and slow, naturally you can go a little bit deeper, but the way I have the camera set up right now, the uh, knee handle is in between the legs of the tripod, and I cannot adjust the height. So, pop this off and show you what I'm talking about. There we go. Let's get this out of the way. Okay, the spindle of the machine was not turned on for that, and if you want to make some outrigger over here on the side of the machine that projects up and has the pivot point out here so you can center the table a little bit better, that's up to you. Uh, on my setup, my air grinder is always on the pivot point. Sometimes on other pantographs it ends up in here somewhere, but for my application it was just easier to keep it out on the end. And you can see how it works. It sweeps real nice, and whatever you're doing out here translates to over here. CNC quality engraving on a manual mill. The type set is probably going to cost you about $140. You can find them all over eBay. They're also made in brass. My characters are one inch tall because it's just easier when you start to think about the ratio of reduction for whatever type or whatever height character you want to end up with and instead of an electric belt driven motor which makes the whole thing more complex I have a little pencil die grinder on there that's about a 40-50 thousand RPM unit tied right into the air on the machine uh, I guess it took about a day and a half to make that rig give me a thumbs up if you like what you see you want to inquire about some of the details or the picture that I'm about to post I'll run the camera by that real slow so you can see all the parts uh, if you have any questions posted, I will answer and I will send you dimensions and such. This is something everybody should have. It's really cool and does expand your capability. This is fixed, back here is fixed, this is an adjustable pin, this is an adjustable pin, 
this is an adjustable pin. This is a hinge and a clamp for the air grinder. And these little guys here, they just keep the rod straight in line. Three quarter, one eighth, sixty, sixty one. There's about eight feet of it. And there's about seven or eight inches worth of the three quarter by two. Two screws top and bottom, two screws top and bottom, here and here, one on either side of the end standoffs, and a plastic bushing, two collars, and a three inch drill blank that goes up into the collet. That's it. If you have any more questions or want any more details, when I have more time, I will break it down for you and post the drawings. Good luck. Have fun. I hope this helped.